Good morning, Toronto Central. It's a pleasure to see you all here this morning in the congregation. Happy Sabbath, and I hope you did have a wonderful week this week. My name is Julian. And my name is Josiah. I will be our host for this morning's service. We want to thank everyone for coming here today, and online and in person. We hope you have a blessed day. And as Josiah said, we are... We hope you have a wonderful day, and we are in for a blessing this morning. As a matter of fact, we did already start because the Sabbath school was very, very interesting, and I hope those online were tuned in as well to, if not our Sabbath school, some other Sabbath school. This morning, our sermon will be from a guest pastor, and do you know his name? Just yeah, that? Dom Williams. Dom Pas Williams. Yeah. Pastor what? Doham Williams. Pastor Doham, Doham, Doman Williams, yes. And the topic of his sermon, I think it is the, the blind and the selfless, the blind the, and the selfless. The blind and the selfless. Quite an interesting topic this morning, Josiah, what do you think? Yeah, it is, sounds interesting to me. Are you, are you looking forward to hearing what he's gonna say today? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Awesome, awesome. And I hope you out there as well are looking forward to hearing this sermon this morning. And there's something that we always ask you to do on, when we come here on Sabbath mornings, which is very, very important, and that's to be a digital disciple. So in order for them to be a digital disciple, Josiah, what are the things that we would like them to do? To share the link with their friends and family. Definitely. And if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please do so. We also invite you to hit the like button as well. Not because we want to see like millions of likes or anything like that, but we would love to, the gospel to go forward. And the more you hit the thumbs up button, then the more the, the algorithm will go and allow it to go forward so more people will see, see the service. And that's why we're asking you to share the link and to subscribe and to do all those things. Not because we want to say, hey, we have tons of subscribers, but because we want to spread the gospel to all the world. All right? Um, anything else you'd like to say to them, Josiah? How about the, the chat? What would you like them to put in the chat or anything like that? Well, any prayer requests that they have so that when the pastor asks that they can pray for them. Indeed. So utilize the chat, and we wish for you today that you'll have a wonderful Sabbath fellowshipping with us in the sanctuary. And if you're not in the sanctuary, you're online, fellowship with us in the chat. All right, God, I'm going to pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us all to be here safely and those online. Be the best to learn something today and be blessed and that everything work on your favor. And I pray, amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. It's good to be in God's house for worship. What do you say? Yeah. want to welcome everyone that's here in person, worshiping with us in the sanctuary. And we also are very happy for those who have joined us online. We know that uh, our worshipers online do have lots of choices these days. You can go back home to your our home church and worship with them or your home conference and so forth or just other places that you might find interesting and you will get a blessing also but you're here with us worshiping with us online and we do appreciate that we thank you and as was mentioned we just ask you to and encourage you to send our our YouTube link around so that uh, 
we will have the message beam across the world where people will come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. I welcome everyone. Glad to see my good friend, Pastor Wayne Martin and Sister Jean worshiping with us today. We are glad to have you. And, you know, we continue to wish you all God's blessing and all that you do. And we just want to uh, encourage our members to continue to reach out to each other because uh, as it, my grandfather used to say, iron sharpened iron. And so as we reach out to each other to the various means, social media, online, telephone, whatever, Zoom, um, whichever way we connect, it's good for us to have that kind of connection. Because the thing is, church is kind of different these days. It's not like what it used to be where we could fellowship together. We would have lunch in the social hall and we would hang out and we would encourage one another. That, that connection is kind of missing. So we have to use whatever opportunities we have so that we can connect with each other and, and share fellowship with each other. Fellowship is important in the Christian walk. It helps us to grow and I encourage us to just reach out. When you think of somebody, give them a call. You know, sometimes we say we pray for them and they don't know, but give them a call. Let them know and just find out how they are doing. And that will help all of us to keep on keeping on. And uh, we have some individuals who are sick. Um, Sister Vernica Ashton, uh, Sister Linda John. We have um, others that we're just asking you to keep in prayer. Sister Colette Cornwall. Um, we know that God's been doing great things for these individuals. Sister Ashton is out at the hospital and is in a facility where she's uh, getting um, some treatment so that she can be able to be better on her own. So let's continue to keep her in prayer. Also, Brother Kareem Philip, um, let's continue to hold up Brother Kareem in prayer as he recovers. We also want to ask you to remember the mother of Elder Alvin Lee, uh, who is very sick in Jamaica. Um, he was somehow this week uh, seeking to get a flight to go down to see his mother. I'm not sure if he actually got to, he, he may have, he got to, so praise God, he got a flight to go and see his mother. So let's keep him and, and the family in prayer because this is a tough time for them. Bereaved, we have a uh, Coffey and Adam's family who are still grieving the loss, tragic loss of a dear loved one. Let's continue to keep them in prayer. Brother Job Dorset has indicated that his mother-in-law passed, so let's keep him in prayer also. Um, some announcement on the 13th of November, the Ontario Conference will be having a regional meeting uh, like a town hall meeting. It's Sunday, um, November 13, at 10.45 to 12.15. This will be for the Metro South Central region. So this is for the churches in this area, and we want to be online. We will get, you, get the, the Zoom information to you in due time so that uh, you can. So prepare your time. Um, open that, that slot there where we can come and hear from our conference administrators and directors. They will be having a regional meeting on Sunday, November 13 at 10.45 a.m. Please bear that in mind. On Sabbath evening, November 12, we'll be having a business meeting at, right at sunset, so please bear that in mind. Our church anniversary is coming up on November 16, 18 to 20, 16, and then the Friday. So that's Wednesday. We'll have a special service of Thanksgiving online, and then we will be having um, a meeting here um, Friday evening and Sabbath. We will be having hybrid services here Friday evening and Sabbath as well. It's the 18 and 19. So please bear that in mind. You'll get further information or update as we go along. Next week's Sabbath will be our ordination service. We'll be ordaining Elder Luster Blair and Elder Wayne Walron and Brother Conrad Barnes, Brother Brian Bentham and Brother Delroy Spence as deacons. So please uh, give your support 
in coming on out to be a part of this very important service. Just a reminder, I did mention this last week, but if you are so inclined to acquire a copy of the devotional book, and there are devotional books for women, adult, youth, children, you name them, just um, contact Sister Moma, Sister Charles Moma, that's Desiree Charles Moma, and also uh, Brother Alexander and Brother Ron Roy, they can help you with information where this is concerned. Or if, you, if, if, if not, you can see me, I should be able to have some information on this also to share with you. If you so we need, we need you if you need to have a, a devotional book. It's good, you know, to have your, in having your devotion, maybe quiet time or with family, you do have something that you can uh, refer, refer to. And so please work on that. In November, November is a very busy month. The 5th to the 12th will be week of prayer. Uh, as you know, our church on a whole, we have week of prayer um, every year, this special week of prayer service. Uh, we will give you some further update as to what we plan to do as a church and how we will uh, go through this experience. Also on the 12th will be a baptism service. We're having a baptism service on November 12th. If there are individuals who are still inclined, who have not yet baptized and still inclined to be baptized, please contact us um, as pastoral staff or elders or Elder Blake or Bible worker so that you can be fully prepared for baptism service. I want to encourage you to continue supporting our morning power hour, 7 a.m., starting at 7 o'clock in the morning. Please... Uh, give your support there and we use our prayer line and we want to encourage you um, our numbers for prayer meeting has gone up significantly and we want to keep it up there so help us to keep it this week we have pastor adrian wallace coming in from alberta to be our special speaker so we are in for a treat this wednesday evening you can't afford to miss it and so please share the word around and let me hope everybody will be here and even those online will join us for our grand prayer meeting that we have each Wednesday evening. And remember, we do open uh, for testimonies, a 10 minutes period there for testimonies. If you do have a praise that you want to declare or share, then that's an opportune time to do so. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to invite our church clerk at this time to come as there are uh, some housekeeping that we want to have done this moment. So I invite Sister Petra to come and share with you. Good morning, church. We have two outgoing transfers. The first one is Dion George outgoing to the Ruth Seventh-day Adventist Church. And we have Kathy Studdard, outgoing to the really living Seventh-day Adventist Church. This is the first reading. Let us all stand, please. call to worship. The Lord in Zion reigneth, let all the world rejoice and come before his throne of grace with tuneful heart and voice. The Lord in Zion reigneth, and there his praises shall ring. To him shall princesses bend the knee and the kings their glory bring. The Lord in Zion reigneth, and who so great as he? The depths of earth are in his hands. He rules the mighty sea, and let his standard wave. The Lord in Zion reigneth. These hours to him belong. 
Oh, enter now his gates, his temple, his gates, and fill his courts with song. Beneath his royal banner, let every creature fall. Exalt the king of heaven and earth and crown him Lord of all. Church, we no call to worship. are glad because we are your sons and daughters and you have blessed us abundantly and so today as we enter into your house of worship we ask that you will come close to us speak to our hearts and bless us again we ask as we give to you all the praise all the glory and the honor have thine own way with us and in us now we ask in Jesus name Let us turn our hymn to hymn 334, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Never ceasing, go for a song to 
Hello, boys and girls. This is Aunt Fernita, and I have a wonderful story for you called "Now I Can See." Today's memory verse is from John chapter nine, verse twenty-five. It says, "One thing I do know: I was blind, but now I see." The message for today's story is: We serve God when we tell others what He has done for us. When something wonderful happens to you, whom do you tell about it? Well, a long time ago, something wonderful happened to a blind man. Whom do you think he told? One day, Jesus saw a young man who had been born blind. The young man sat by the road, begging people to give him just a little money. But Jesus didn't give him any money. He gave him something much, much better. Jesus spit on the ground, made a little mud with the spit. And put the mud on the man's eyes. Go wash in the pool of Siloam, Jesus told the man. So the blind man went to the pool and washed, and an amazing thing happened. As soon as the mud was rinsed from his eyes, he could see. Imagine how happy he was, and imagine how surprised his family was when he came home. He was like a different person. In fact, the neighbors weren't even sure it was the same man. Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? They asked. Yes, that's him. Some said. No, no, he only looks like him. Others said. This young man couldn't wait to tell them what Jesus had done for him. Yes, I was blind. He said, I was born blind, and I could never see until today. The man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went to the pool and washed the mud off, and then I could see. Some neighbors took the man who had been born blind to the Jewish rulers, but the Jewish rulers didn't want to believe that Jesus had made him see, and they didn't want anyone else saying that Jesus had made him see either. So they sent for his parents. "Is this your son?" they asked. "Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that now he can see?" This man's parents were afraid of the Jewish rulers, and they didn't want to answer. He is our son, they said, and we know he was born blind. But how he can see now, or who opened his eyes, we really don't know. Ask him; he will speak for himself. But this young man was not afraid of the Jewish rulers. He was so thankful that Jesus had done something good for him, and he wouldn't keep quiet. He told the rulers about the mud and how he had washed it off in the pool of Siloam, and guess what? They chased him out of the synagogue. When Jesus heard about that, he went to find the man. For the first time, the man saw the one who had healed him. He saw Jesus smile, and he smiled back. Then the man knelt before Jesus and thanked him for healing him. He would never. Ever forget this day, and he would never stop telling people about the wonderful thing Jesus had done for him. This podcast was brought to you by GraceLink.net and Studio El Piso. For more children's resources, please visit GraceLink.net. It is time for prayer. Isaiah 37 reminds us about King Hezekiah. King Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers, and he read it. And he ran up unto the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And he prayed, "We do likewise. We do the same. Let us kneel for prayer for those who can and for those who cannot, like myself, because of health reasons." We kneel in our hearts. The Lord knows we're petitioning the throne of grace. Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on us. Baptize us anew. We pray. The Lord is our strength and our song. And He has become our salvation, Lord. We thank You for Your Sabbath day, blessed, hallowed, and sanctified. May it be a joy and a delight. May we find the time to reach out to help others in need. 
Father, we ask for the Holy Spirit to bless this service. Abide with us. We pause to ask for the forgiveness of sins. Look upon our afflictions and our pain and forgive all of our sins. We pray for the mind and spirit of Christ. Create in us a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within us. At this time, we lift up the sick and the bereaved. Oh, Lord, we lift up Sister Ashton, Sister Veronica Taylor, Brother Kareem, Brother John, Brother Tom, named and unnamed, the bereaved Lord, Sister Brenda Thomas, Brother Satchel, Brother Job, the Swabies, Lord, we lift them before you, the Cuffies, Lord. We lift it before you, strength, comfort, hope, and peace. Oh, bum of Gilead, where are you? Where are you? Your people are sick and bereaved. Satan would have us to believe that you have altogether forsaken us and abandoned us, but it's not true. You are Emmanuel, God with us. You are always with us. Now we lift up the community, Lord, the world, persecuted Christians around the world, our church projects, every evangelistic series going on, Lord. Ruth Ann, her five kids, they lost everything. Provide for them, the Vlad family. Now to close, we lift up the speaker of the hour, your manservant, your earthen vessel, Pastor Williams. As we pray for him, we pray for all preachers and evangelists, Lord. May his words be full of wisdom, heavenly wisdom. May the law of kindness be in his tongue. May his words be a savor of life unto life and not death unto death. May his words be words fitly spoken like apples of gold and pitchers of silver. Give him your strength. Bless him with your perfect peace that passes all understanding and bless him with heavenly wisdom. Take away fears, anxiety, nervousness, worries, anything that's unlike you. Holy Spirit, empower him. Open his mouth and loosen his tongue. Lord, may he encourage himself in the Lord as God. Now, Lord, special blessings upon every person, every family represented, whether here or absent, and upon all our visitors, Lord. Continue to lead and guide us into all truth. Now, unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. And we lift up the request from the chat, prayer WhatsApp, the church website, our prayer box, Lord, our list, our books and journals. We pray with thanksgiving according to your will. In the name of Jesus alone, we pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath again, everyone. God's blessings. Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time, God is good. Are you feeling comfortable this morning? Come on. Church, are you feeling comfortable this morning? Yes, yes, God is good. We are here to praise God. We are here to give Him all the praise. And also, at this time, we are, we are here to praise Him in our tithes and our free will offering. The deacon, please stand. But before you go... As the Bible said in Malachi 3 verse 10 that bringing you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me herewith said the Lord of hosts if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. You believe that church? Yes we do. We do believe that and also because you said that you're feeling comfortable, you're warm and nice this morning. You know, the church have expenses, the budget. We call it the budget. And because the mere fact that you're feeling warm and comfortable this morning is because of the budget that you gave. The internet, a lot of you sitting home online, you can look in and you can hear what is going on 
is because you gave to the budget. So this morning, we just want to encourage, I know the deaconesses, they have some envelopes marked budget. Do you have it, deaconess? Budget. So if you're here as a visitor and you want to give something towards our budget, you want to give it to our online service, just hold your hands up on the, the, the ushers. They will give you an envelope. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for being so good to us. We thank you for your health. We thank you for strength. And Father, at this time, we're about to give our tithes and our funeral offering. Father, may you continue to keep us in good health. May you continue to bless us. And Father, today I ask for a special blessing upon the tithes and the offerings. And may you help, O oh Father, that it may go forth to do your work. And Father, we just want to say thanks to you in advance for hearing, for answering, and for providing. I pray in Jesus' name. I travel along They say I have nothing But they are so wrong In my heart I'm rejoicing Oh, I wish they could see Thank you, Lord For your blessings on me Got a roof up above me A fine place to sleep There's food on my table And shoes on my feet You gave Lord, and the fine family, thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. I know I'm not worthy, these clothes are not new, I don't have but Lord, Lord, I have you, and to me you're all that matters, though the world cannot see. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Got a of me and a fine place to sleep there's food on my table and shoes right on my feet you gave me a love lord and the fine family Above me, 
I've got a fine place to sleep. There's food on my table and shoes, shoes on my feet. You gave me a love, Lord, and the fine family. a roof up above me, yes, Lord, and the fine place to sleep. There's food on my table and shoes, shoes on my feet. You gave me a love, Lord, and the fine Good morning again, church. This morning we do have a dedication service and being dedicated are four babies this morning. Let's say amen. Parents, parents, when you hear your name, if you can please come forward along with the spiritual guardians. First, we have Zane, Major, Kyron, Alexander. He was born September 16th, 2022 at the Scarborough General Hospital, weighing six pounds, 14 ounces at 427 p.m. Parents, Nisa Alexander and Kenneth Smith. Guardians, Samantha George, Roxy Cornwall, Feria Francis, Noreen Cornwall Segrera, Keisha Robert, Alicia Smith, Seville Francis, Dwayne Date, Kevin Thomas, Rashad Bess, and Deron Grill. Next, we have Dane Ignatius Manley Hamlet Jr. He was born on June 24th, 2022 at Mount Sinai Hospital, weighing eight pounds, one ounce at 2.30 a.m. Parents, Chantel Lilly and Dane Hamlet. Guardians, Norris McLean, Jason Burke, Janelle Samuels, and Cheyenne Miller Casely. Next, we have Jeremiah. Keon Parker Hamlet. He was born on July 14, 2022 at the Humber River Hospital, weighing five pounds, 11 ounces at 11.31 a.m. Parents, Manifa Clark and Jerome Hamlet. Guardians, 
Marcel McDonnell, Erwin Lawrence, Jer Jermaine Palmer, Norvin Gaines, Darrell Lawrence, and Erwin Washington. Irvin Washington. And our final baby, we have Elias Roddy Mayers, and he was born on June 26, 2022, at the Toronto Birth Center, weighing seven pounds, 11 ounces, at 6.18 a.m. Parents, Raquel and Roddy Mayers. Guardians, Feria Francis and Dujon Donaldson. Good morning, good morning everyone. Good morning parents, good morning uh, guardians and supporters. This is a beautiful setting. Uh, we are happy to have everyone. Let's come closer. Okay. Here today, it's a very special day in the whole act of setting your little one aside in dedication. I'm going to invite our elders that are standing with me to join with me and Pastor Martin is going to be assisting us today. even in times like these, you know you see it necessary to bring your little ones uh, to the house of God for dedication. They were given to you as special gift from the Lord. It's God's blessing on your life that have brought these little ones into the world. And God has a special purpose for them. Yes. God has a very special purpose for every one of them. And uh, today, I understand that we have all boys. All boys today, four boys. And uh, we would love these little ones to grow up, to be influential in leading people in the right direction, the right way. And so this is the right way to start off with them. I must let you know that the whole act of dedication or baby dedication is also parent dedication because you do have a role, a responsibility to train these little ones in the way that God would want them to go. The Bible says, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. The Bible also tells us that children are a gift of the Lord. And the Bible tells us that as parents, as guardians, it's our responsibility to bring to them the knowledge of God. The Bible says when you sit down, when you lie down, when you walk about, whatever you're doing, it's your responsibility to show them 
the love of God and to bring God into their lives, bring Jesus Christ into their lives. So some responsibilities is to train them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. What does that mean? It means that you're to spend time telling them about Jesus and his love and impress upon them the principles of heaven so that they can walk in God's way. You are to be an example to these little ones, inside and outside the home. What you do, they are going to emulate. They are going to act like you. And so therefore, if you want them to grow up behaving well, as parents, we have to behave well. Amen? Amen. And, and, and so what, whatever we, you know, sometimes we figure we just, training is just about what we tell them. But it's also what we show them, what we do. They follow us, they listen to us, and sometimes what we do is more impacting than what we say to them, right? And, and, and in these days, I can tell you in a little while, if you do one thing and do the other, they will call you out for it because that's the age in which we're living. Back in the days, children never used to say anything, but now they will take you on and ask you, how come you're doing this and you want us to do this? They will call you out. So it's good to train, to lead by precept and example. Be to them what God wants them to be. So they follow you as you follow Christ, Paul says. It's very important. And so it's your responsibility to provide for them, to pray for them, to provide protection and security for them. Share with them God's love. Share with them your time, your life. As they grow up, they'll be able to come up and say, there is no one like mom, there's no one like dad, because of the experience that they have growing up with you. So again, I repeat, Teach them to love Jesus, to serve him, to obey and honor him with all their heart. You know, too much importance cannot be placed upon this training, and it must begin now. In fact, if we're going to start now, it's a little late, um, but it's enough time to, to begin. Admonish your parents. You're no stranger to church. Um, and I admonish you um, to walk in the way of the Lord. You know, allow God to lead you so that you can lead your little one. Trust God. Be faithful to him. Commit yourself to him. And as you commit yourself to God, the blessings you seek, he will grant it. Because when we trust God, we become the apple of his eye. He looks out for us. You know, we may go through situation and circumstance, but God is there with us. When we ignore him, we are walking away from his protection. We're walking away from his love. We're walking away from his goodness. So I implore you, I beg of you, that you walk with Jesus. You choose him, serve him. Don't let the world suck you in, as they would say. You know, just allow God to lead you and to guide you so that you can be a servant to him, training these little ones, providing leadership, quality leadership to these little ones. So I have some questions that I'd like to ask of you before we have the prayer of dedication. And if you're inclined to carry out these acts, please say, I do, or we do, as a family, as we go through this act of dedication. Our first one is, do you recognize your child as a gift from God and do you give heartfelt thanks to God for blessing your life with this special gift? Amen. Do you dedicate your child today to the Lord who gave this little one, him to you? Do you pledge to be good parents, Christian parents, and doing so that you will bring up your child in a Christian environment, a Christian home, looking to God for his wisdom, his strength, his guidance, his protection, and his provision. 
Do you promise to give your child all the possible benefits of home, school, and most importantly, church? So what this is saying, let me tell you from now. We, we want to enlist them in our cradle roll class as soon as they can. Right? We want them to become members of our children's division. And, and for them to do that, we, enc we encourage you to attend church and bring them along. And when you can't bring them along, call a member. Because as a church here, we are here for you to have them attend church as well. And finally, do you promise to pray for your child on a regular basis, realizing that it's only with God's hand upon their life that they can be truly blessed? to the church members behind me and those behind you as parents um, do you promise to support these parents in helping them along the way as they train and nurture their little one do you promise to give full support it may be financial support it may be some time with the children it may be a kind word whatever you can it may be uh, an encouraging word. Do you so promise to give this necessary support to your friends, families, parents, loved ones? Amen. Say amen. amen. And congregation say amen. amen. So we are prepared as a church to, uh, to help in that nurturing aspect. But you will have to bring them to us so that we can, we can train them. I grew up in the church. I'm what I am today because of what I went through growing up in the church. And this is what God wants to do with these little ones. Who knows? It could be preachers preaching from here down the road. God has great plans for them. But you'll never know unless you allow God to lead you and to lead them. At this time, I'm going to invite the elders who are here to take a child um, and uh, Pastor Martin is going to um, say the prayer of dedication at this time. I invite the congregation to. I invite the congregation to please stand. Our heads are bowed and we are praying. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the safe arrival of all of these children this morning. We thank you, Father, that there have been no complications in their birth. And we thank you that mother and father are both doing well. We thank you, Father, for the gift of life. But we also recognize the serious responsibility placed upon parents in these difficult times to bring up their children. We recognize, Father, four boys are being dedicated today. So that places extra and special responsibilities upon the fathers. Mothers are always known to have their hands full as they instruct and direct on a daily basis the needs of their children, but we're praying today that our fathers will be exemplary fathers as they direct their sons to lead in this role 20, 30 years down the road. So this father becomes a special responsibility placed upon fathers that they're not only providers for the home, but also spiritual instructors in the home as the priests of the home. And so, fathers, we take this responsibility seriously because many of our homes are fatherless and the responsibility is placed totally upon the mothers. So we thank you for the fathers who are here. We thank you for the fathers who have responsibilities that they will execute. We thank you, Father, that you will keep these young children these children who are being dedicated today free from all childhood diseases. Keep them safe at school, Father. Not even schools are safe places anymore. 
And so, Father, as they go through their matriculation, through the different grades, that their parents will teach them the instruction required to be Christian children. And so, Father, we thank you for the instructions given by the pastor this morning that the church becomes an extension of the home where we will be able to assist and support as needs be. So, Father, we ask that heaven's choicest blessings be placed upon these dear children who are being held by elders this morning. You know them by name and nature. You know what they will become in years to come. And I'm asking you, Father, to give us the opportunity now that as we take on this solemn responsibility, parents have seen the responsibility of beginning with you. And I know, Father, as they bring their children in, this will be a special moment in time when they will remember moments of this service. So, Father, we commit them all in your care and keeping, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, church. The scripture lessons are coming from Numbers 16, 1 to 3. And now Noram, the son of Lezer, the son of Ker, the son of Levi, the enter and Briam, Eli, and the son of Peter, and the son of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain children of Israel, 250 princesses assemble, famous in the congregation of men and women. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, He take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, they lifted up themselves above the congregation of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let the church say amen. We have been blessed thus far. I know God has a special blessing for us. We are, it is my pleasure, my privilege to welcome Pastor Doman Williams to Toronto Central, his first experience here. And Pastor Williams, and my family, we go way back into the 90s when he was just a young man attending church in Mandeville 
and also later enrolled at Northern Caribbean University. He used to be one of those who were on the youth choir that my wife had back there at Mandeville Church. And Pastor Doman went on to graduate from NCU. He worked in the Northeast Jamaica Conference, served as pastor, served as ministerial secretary um, before immigrating to Canada. He lived for a time in Alberta and then moved here in the GTA region. And we are welcome, we're happy to welcome Pastor Doman. Pastor Doman and I, we, we share the same birth date. Uh, and so we have a connection because, you know, whenever it's birthday, we wish each other's birthday. Not very rare you can, somebody can call you and say happy birthday and you say happy birthday to you too. You know, so, so that's the kind of connection we have. So we welcome you, Pastor, and we pray that God will bless you and use you today to bring a word from the throne room of grace to our hearts. Before Pastor Doman comes to present God's word today, we will have our praise team preparing our hearts for God's word. Happy Sabbath, church. Oh, that doesn't sound like you're very happy today. Happy Sabbath, church. That's a lot better. Praise the Lord. This is the time for sing inspiration. That means you get to sing somewhere other than your shower or your bedroom. <laughs> and don't worry, not all of us are the singers of the world, so don't worry about the person beside you. Just sing. This song says, Nara, Nara, A, Nare Kele. Now you might be like, what is this language? Well, it says we give you our praise, right? So we want to give the Lord our praise today. And feel free to stand if you like. so much for me I cannot tell it all If I had ten thousand tongues it still won't be enough Can delay. We sing now. 
brutalize the words because <laughs> it's not my not my main language okay but nonetheless god is good and he knows that i was trying yes amen <laughs> all right we raise a hallelujah in the presence of our enemies at me because when we were practicing this song I told her this song reminds me of Paul and Silas in the prison when it says I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies and if you listen to the other words listen to all the words in the song think about Paul in the prison he was in prison praising God and then the prison shook and even when they could have escaped out of the prison, they didn't run. And they praised God in their situation. And this song makes me think when we're in our storms, my mom even said it last night. She said, praise God and it helps. <laughs> amen, amen. So let's raise a hallelujah today, amen. In the presence of our enemies, we'll still raise a hallelujah louder than our unbelief it goes like this I'll sing I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies I raise a
presence of my enemies. Come on, I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. You may not believe it, but sing it out. Louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. A hallelujah. Just praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Doesn't matter what you're going through, just sing a song. Whatever song is on your heart, and you'll see the Lord lift your heart, lift that heaviness. Amen. We are raising a hallelujah to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And we're going to proclaim it today. He is King. Oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels
Now we can sing like this, a song that angels cannot sing because they don't know the things we've gone through, but we can crown him Lord of all. Amen. Amen. God is good. And for those of us who have been walking with him for a little while, we know what he has done. We have seen many battles. Sometimes we felt beaten up. Sometimes we felt down. But you know, he wins every time. And my decision is that I'm going to stick with God. It is really, really good to be here with you today. Um, it's quite interesting. I think the last time I actually saw Pastor Nemhard and Sister Nemhard physically is about 20 years ago. Um, I think the last time we literally saw each other probably was in 2001. Long time. And he looks the same. But God is good. And it's really, really wonderful to be here with you today. I'm going to share a little word with you from a passage that I find to be quite interesting. Sometimes a little scary. Our topic for today is the blind and the selfless. I don't know if you've ever wondered, for those of us who are able to see, still able to see, and interestingly, the children's story this morning was about that blind man who Jesus healed. I don't know if you've wondered what it would be like if you were to lose your sight. Um, I have. And as much as I tend to say nothing scares me, sometimes I think maybe that does. But I think it's worse when we become spiritually blind. And that's where we'll be looking at today. I invite you to bow your heads with me as we pray. Oh, Father, in heaven, as we open your word now, speak to our hearts, we ask. May you just have thine own way. And in the end, may your name be glorified. And each one of us will experience your rich blessings, we ask. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I want to take just a quick moment just to say hello to somebody. Um, there's uh, one of your elders who showed me a message in the chat from a church that I pastored back in Jamaica and Portland, a message from Sister Elliston. So hello to Sister Elliston and to all the members of the Orange Bay Church. All right. The story is told of a young pastor. He had become disgusted with ministry and was making every effort to quit ministry and to quit church. Part of his problem was he had gotten tired, tired of the immaturity at church, the disillusionment that was there, and the politics that existed. As much as we felt that the church was corrupted and all of that, his wife would still drag him to church. So he would still be at church, but he was not really there. Unfortunately, that's the experience of many people who are still at church. And what is even worse, some of us who are still at church we have not yet realized that that's our state. And that's where it scares even me, because now I need to find out where do I stand? Because I am here. I haven't left the church. But am I really here? Am I still a servant of the living God? 
So as we look at this topic today, we'll read a few verses, a few of the verses from Numbers 16. I invite you a little bit later today, read the entire chapter to get a better grasp of what's there. We're going to look at maybe just about three things today. One is what happens when a spiritual person becomes blind? What happens? And then we will look at the selflessness of a true spiritual person. And finally, we look at the call, the call to be separate. Let's go to Numbers 16. What happens when a spiritual person becomes blind? I'll tell you, bad things happen. Very, very bad things happen when a person who is spiritual becomes blind. In number 16, we have this fascinating story. Four men are named in the very beginning. I'll read verses 1 through to 3 again. Now, Korah, the son of Ishar, the son of Koath, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Pelet, sons of Reuben, took men. Remember, when spiritual people go blind, bad things happen. So we have these four men. We have Korah, we have Dathan, we have Abiram, and we have a man named On. These four men, according to this verse, they took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous men in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, this is what they are now saying to Moses and to Aaron. He take too much upon yourselves. In other words, you're taking on too much responsibility. And their rational for this is seeing all the congregation are holy. Every one of them. And the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. When spiritual people go blind, bad things happen. Among the things is they usually become dissatisfied. Not only do they become dissatisfied, but they also become unsatisfied. And when you put those two together, tragic things happen. In this particular scenario, this is what's happening with Korah. Korah was a Levite, which mean, meant that he had the responsibility of working in the sanctuary, which means he was numbered among those who would have been brought very near to God. But he was dissatisfied. He was unsatisfied and he wanted more. I found a nice little contrast between being unsatisfied and being dissatisfied. I want to share it with you. To be dissatisfied is to be displeased or unhappy with some, something. And here's an example. If a meal is filling but tastes bad, you might say it is dissatisfying. Make sense? Okay. To be unsatisfied is to feel unfulfilled by something. For example, the meal really tastes good, 
but you're not full. So as for these four men, it's not that they did not have positions, it's not that they were not near to God, but it's a case where they were neither, they were, it's a case where they were both unsatisfied and dissatisfied at the same time. I want you to skip down to verse 8 with me. Something that Moses started to say to them. And Moses said unto Korah, Hear, I pray you, his sons of Levi. Listen to Moses' words. Seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel hath separated you from the congregation of Israel? to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them? In essence, Moses is saying, don't think that this is a small matter that God has chosen you for this. When you read a little bit further, Moses asks the question, and what is Aaron? Now, if you are like me, then you know what it's like to be unsatisfied. And yes, if you are like me, you know what it's like to be dissatisfied. Here's one of the tragic realities of this when spiritual people go blind. Not only do they become unsatisfied and dissatisfied, but they also lose a sense of that which is good. To demonstrate it in this story, look at verse 12. And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliah, which said, we will not come up. Verse 13. And this is Dathan and Abiram's response to Moses. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of a land that floweth with milk, and honey. I ask you, where were they coming from? God had to work miracles to get them from where they were. But yet these men are saying, do you think it's a small thing that you've brought us out of a land that floweth with milk and honey, bearing in mind, God said, I am leading you to a land that floweth with milk and honey. Here's a strange question for each one of us. Bearing in mind, to think it and to believe it are not necessarily the same things. But have you ever wondered if it was better before you started coming to church? Have you ever considered that the people you were with were better? Have you ever considered going back? When spiritual people go blind, they lose their consciousness of that which is good. And that which is so bad, they will consider that to be good. Because in this case, Egypt was slavery. Egypt was terrible, horrible. But here we have men who have been brought near to God. Leaders in the congregation of Israel. And they are saying, you have brought us from the land that floweth with milk and honey. They're not done. Second half of verse 13. Here's what they're accusing Moses of doing now. I'll read the entire verse. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of a land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us? 
in the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us. It gets worse. Verse 14. Moreover, thou hast not brought us up out of a... Uh, sorry. Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey, or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Listen to this now. Wilt thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. In essence, they're saying no to him. So what, you're going to blind us now? We can see where we are. They preferred Egypt. And they wanted to go back. When spiritual people go blind, they will have a desire to go back to where they came from. Thinking, believing, being deceived, of course, that that, that which they left is better than that which they now have and that which is ahead. Another thing that happens when spiritual people go blind, when it happens, they seek company. Whenever it happens, they will seek company. And please bear in mind, they are not merely seeking company among the ones they left. But they are seeking company from among the ones with whom they are known. And this will now lead to the inciting of rebellion. Look at verse 19. I'll tell you a little bit of the story since we're not reading the entire chapter. As these men stood up against Moses and Aaron, standing up against God, Moses said to them, tomorrow we will settle this matter and God will reveal whose are his. Not today, not tonight, tomorrow. That meant that everybody got an opportunity to rethink this business and to decide where they are going to stand. On the morning, this is what happens. Verse 19. And Korah, not Moses, not Aaron, and Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the, unto the door of the con congregation, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. Point is, Korah decided to get everybody in place to watch the showdown. When spiritual people go blind, bad things happen. They become dissatisfied, unsatisfied, they lose their sense and consciousness of that which is good, and they incite rebellion. One last point on this. God worked a miracle that day and destroyed all the wicked people. Well, the leaders in, the, in it. The very next day, this is what the people said. Verse 41. But on the morrow, all the congregation of the, of, all the, congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, He hath killed the people of the Lord. Now I ask you, as I'm asking myself, and it's my intent to continue to ask myself. Paul tells us in Corinthians, consider yourself as to whether you're still in the faith. So each one of us, we need to check ourselves. So I'm asking you now, have you gone blind? 
Are you going blind? If I have gone blind, good news is Jesus still works miracles. If I am going blind, Jesus still heals. So I'm not lost. My case is not hopeless because there's still hope with God. Let's take a look at the selflessness of a spiritual man in the midst of people who have gone blind. In this case, we're going to look a little bit at Moses. Look at verse 4. And when Moses heard it, he fell on his face. When Moses heard all of this that was happening, he fell on his face because now he realizes that he needs to go to God. So what you'll find then in situations like these, the person who is truly spiritual will not get into the business of defending himself or herself. They may have to make some declaration, however. But to defend, leave that part to God. Because when God defends you, it really doesn't matter who is against you, how many are against you, it really doesn't matter. Because God stands for us. Verses 15 and 16. And this part is interesting. We had read earlier verses 12 through 2. 14, when Moses had sent to call Dathan and Abiram and they did not come and they asked him, is it a small thing that you've brought us out of the land that flowed with milk and honey? This is Moses' response. Verse 15, and Moses was wroth. And said unto the Lord, and here is where it becomes very important as we consider the state of mind of the spiritual person when other spiritual persons go blind. Moses was angry, but notice to whom he went. He was very wroth, but notice to whom he spoke. In this situation, we find Moses turning to God. And so, for you and I, as we see things like these happening around us, it is for us to turn, to speak to our God. Because if we try to speak too much to some of these individuals, we may end up losing our way. But who can lose their way when they talk to God? So then let's turn to God. When selflessness comes into all of this, the spiritual person will also realize that even through them, God will do mighty deeds. And sometimes they may become tempted to take the credit to say, see, I told you. They might be inclined to say, this shows who you are and who I am. But in these situations, the selfless person will always direct the glory and the praise, and the recognition to God. Because after all, that's where it came from in the first place. Verse 28. And Moses said, Hereby he shall know, that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of mine own mind. 
I did not do them on my own accord. All of this was being done by God. I remember a speaker at a consecration service at Northern Caribbean University. Um, she said this. When you glow, when you glow, give the glory to God. God will place us in situations and we will do wondrous things and people will be inclined to look at us. But when you glow, give the glory to God. All of it. Not some of it, but all of it. So that in the end, your feet will be kept grounded as you walk the path that leads to eternal life. One last thing on the matter of this selflessness of a true spiritual person. Some of us find it difficult to pray for some people who have done some things to us. Not only that, for some of us, when we do pray for some of the people who have done some bad things to us, the prayers we pray are not for their salvation. <laughs> the true, true spiritual person, however, will look beyond himself will look beyond herself. And for these individuals who would have risen up against him or her will now become an intercessor. To intercede with God. Think about it. What will bring God more glory? The destruction of that man who did you harm? or the salvation of that woman who did you harm. I read a mission story some years back. This missionary decided to go and witness to a family. The husband wasn't receptive. The wife was. And he would often go do his Bible studies and this person is warming up to the gospel and his experience changed. The husband wasn't happy. And he told this missionary, if you come back to my house, I will kill you. The missionary went back. As promised, the man killed him. Arrested, tried, sentenced. But while he was in prison, this same man met the same Jesus that the missionary served, became converted, and now this is him. I can't wait to go to heaven to see my brother. Think now just for a moment the kind of rejoicing that will take place when these two men meet in the kingdom. We've talked about what happens when a spiritual person goes blind. We said bad things happen. They become dissatisfied. They become unsatisfied. They lose a consciousness of that which is good. And not only that, but they will incite rebellion. The person who is truly spiritual will exhibit selflessness. This person will not try to defend themselves. This person will, however, at times, declare who they are, make some declaration, will always give the glory and the honor to God, and this person will always be interceding. I'll read two verses, and then we'll go to our third and final point. 
number 16. Starting at verse 20. And the Lord spake unto Moses and, un and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. Now I ask you the question, what do you want God to do either to or with your enemy? What do you want him to do? And if God were to say to you, move aside, what would you do? Verse 22. And they fell upon their faces and said, O oh God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin? And wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? I need to read maybe two more verses. Verse 44. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Get you up from among this congregation, that I may consume them as in a moment. That's the second time in the same story that God got to the place where he said, step, step aside. And for, sec for the second time, and they fell upon their faces, interceding for these individuals. So the spiritually, the truly spiritual person will not be caught up in defending himself. He will not be taking the glory to himself. And he will always be interceding for those who have even done him wrong. But I'll tell you there's something else that he will have to do also. He will have to issue a call. A call to the entire people. Those who want to be gods must separate themselves from the wicked. So there's a call to be separate. Verse 24. God gave instructions to Moses, and Moses needed to say this to the people. Bearing in mind that all of these individuals have now gathered. We had read in verse 19 where Korah had gathered all Israel, and they came together to see what was going to happen. And now God has an instruction to everybody. And each person must make a choice for himself, for herself. Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. In essence, God is saying, Something is about to happen, and if you stay where you are, you shall be destroyed. So if you want to live, move. If you want to live, leave. Because you cannot experience the blessings of God if you remain where you are with the ones you're with. So separate yourself from them. Verse 26. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. Verse 27. So they got, them, got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram on every side. 
this part strikes me. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents and their wives and their sons and their little children. Imagine this. God gives a call asking his people to move away from these wicked persons. And here you are, you're watching people moving. Will you stand? Now I can tell you, if I were the son of Dathan, I'm gone. When I see God saying, everybody move, and I see the entire congregation drifting away, I'm gone. But what's happening here? These men, they are so defiant, told you, when spiritual people go blind, bad things happen. They came and they stood boldly in the doors of their tents looking out. Today, in our church, as we are getting nearer and nearer to the end of time, God is doing the very same thing. And so the question that comes to me and comes to you now is, are you, am I moving? Have I moved? Am I at the same place, doing the same things, thinking the same way? Change is available, but have I accessed it? The end result is tragic. Moses prayed a prayer. You'll find it starting at about verse 28 going down. Moses said to God, Lord, if these men die a natural death, it will not reveal much. But let a new thing happen. And he goes a step further. Lord, let the earth open up and take them in. He said it, and the earth just parted. Swallowed them up and closed up again. God knows those who belong to him. He knows his own. Something to consider. If Jesus were to appear inside here right now, physically, and he were to decide to take those who belong to him, would he take you? Would he? I need to ask myself, would he take me? If you think the answer is yes, then I'll ask you to pray and ask him to make sure it's yes. If you think the answer is no, then a full and complete surrender to him is called for today. In Revelation chapter 18, in verse 2, the Bible tells us that Babylon is fallen. He goes on to tell us that Babylon has become the habitation of all manner of evil. And then there comes the call. So as it was in this day with Dathan and Abiram and Korah, so it is for us. Revelation 18 verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people that ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye receive not of her plagues. Finally, when we started a story in Numbers 16, 
there were four men who stood up against Moses. Korah, Dathan, Abiram, and on. But what's very interesting is the man on is not mentioned again in the entire story. Four men are named. But after that first naming of all four of them, on is not mentioned again. I'll tell you what I believe. I believe that this man on got caught up in all of this, gotten a bit blind, but that night, that night, as he thought about the entire situation, as he would have reflected on the mighty deeds of God, both in Egypt and in the wilderness since we left, as he considered all of this, I believe he decided, I can no longer be a part of this company. So the passage only tells us about the destruction of those 250 princes, who were burnt up by a fire that came from the Lord. And it tells us about Korah and Dathan and Abiram, the ones the earth opened up and took in. But as for the man on. So here it is, brothers and sisters. If in the story I can't be a Moses, I want to be an Aaron. Yes. If I can't be a Moses in the story... I want to be an Aaron. And if I can't be an Aaron or a Moses, I would choose to be the man on. I want to go to heaven. And the only way I can get there is if I take a stand with Jesus and allow him, if there are scales on my eyes so I can't see clearly, that he will remove them. Because it's important for me to see my true condition, my true state. And when I shall see my true state exactly as I am, he will also show me what he can do with me. And when I make that decision to allow him to do in me that which is necessary, then I shall be guaranteed a place in the celestial courts. I don't want to be blind. I want to see clearly so that in the end, I'll be an instrument in the hand of God to will and to do of his good pleasure. So today, brothers and sisters, I ask you, examine your own self today. Forget everybody else. Where do you stand? Sure enough, for those of us who are in the sanctuary, we're here. Sure enough, I believe we're at the right place. For those of us who are online, you're, you've joined worship today. I believe you are at the right place. I believe I am at the right place. But the question still is, while I am at the right place, am I right? Am I right with God? Whatever the answer is, I need to draw nearer to God. And I believe it's the same for each one of us. So I invite you today to think on it. Make a commitment that blindness shall not be your portion. Not when we have Jesus who gives us sight. And may the grace of God 
do the work that's needed in each one of us so that in the end, through the celestial gates we'll walk to live and to reign with Christ throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. God bless you. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Oh, Father, all of us at some point in time, if not now, we have been blind. But we thank you that you are opening and you have opened our eyes so we can see. Lord, we have sinned. We have drifted afar away from you. We're thanking you for not giving up on us. And so we ask even now as we give ourselves to you, that you'll take us onto yourself, that you'll forgive us, that you'll wash us, that you'll cleanse us, that you'll purify us, and that you'll fit us for heaven. As you clean us up, may you fill us with your Holy Spirit so that the life of Christ will be lived out in us. That when others see us, they will see Jesus in us. Bind us close to yourself, Father. Use us to accomplish your will and your purposes. May you take full control of this congregation. May you use each person to fulfill that purpose you've called them to. And Father, when the redeemed of the Lord shall enter into the kingdom, may every one of us, our family, our friends, our loved ones, wherever they are, may all of us together enter in, singing your praises, thanking you for that which you've done. Have thine own way with us now, we pray thee. And tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. a great word. Do you agree, church? I know I was blessed, and I hope that you were too. Pastor Williams left us with the word to remember that it doesn't matter how much people are against us, God is there and he is on our side. He also advises us not to become spiritually blind. Do you agree, church? Thank you again for joining us today for our church service. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Shut up.